a leadership role in yourself, but also teach some of the ladies in your. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Audrey with NSU Cleaning. I had a, a quick thought, real quick, right? I thought this would be good to talk about. And that's subcontracting. And when you are pricing out a job, what do you do when you have a job, right? And um, a lot of the times, you're the person that gets the job, you're subcontracting, which means that you would be bringing on other guys and telling them, hey, you know, if you guys do pavement work or if you do stripping or um, let's say drywall or something like that, or in my case, since I only pay attention to cleaning scopes, anything that either I can't do or I don't have the men power to do or that I just want to get it done faster in some cases, whatever the scenario may be, let's say, for instance, um, you're, you got a window guy, you have a subcontractor that does windows and you want to uh, get the job, do a post cleaning job, um, I'll use realistic terms because this is exactly what happens to me. Right, so I have subs that do other parts of cleaning for me so that my team can come in and just do the post construction cleaning. We come in and we scrub the cabinets, we scrub the floors, we clean the tile, etc. So, like for my carpet guy, I would have him come and bid how he would do the upholstery cleaning, he would do the carpet cleaning, and then I'll have a window guy come. And if he's doing two, three story homes with me, then he would bid the inside and exterior of the windows, the screens, the treads, the frame, etc. And therefore, we've collaboratively put together a bid. Now, what do you do in times when your price or if you know that you've talked to your client or you've priced out a certain cost for your client, but your subs price is out of the range of your client? Um, what do you do at that point? Do you go ahead and collaborate those bids and submit to the client? Do you separate the bids and let that person go and contact them on their own? Or do you ride with your team and say, hey, um, we're, this is our price. This is what it's going to cost for me to give you my full services and etc." cetera. Um, once again, I'm one of those people that can waver anyway because I feel like you want to make sure that you get the most out of your business and you want to make sure that you give the most to your client. So I think based on the type of person that you are and the type of businessman that you are, that you can either A, once again, separate each one of those bids and let your client know that they have an option to go with the full service or that they could break those services down. Now, if they want to go with you as the contractor to go ahead and get the client the cleaning done in all aspects and areas, you may just win by being able to bring on more services as much as possible. If they have a garage, they need epoxy cleaning, if they need tile and grout service, you never know. But you want to come in with the mentality of offering everything that you can to this person, especially if it's a move out cleaning. That's one reason why I love move out cleaning is because there's always so much to do. And of course, there's money to be made. And who doesn't want to spend all day in one place making the money than to be at several different locations all of that day trying to make the same amount of money. So if you get a good job or you get a good lead, somebody has a 3,000 square foot home, 5,500 square foot home, 9,000 square foot home, whatever the case may be, and they're doing a move out cleaning. I started a move out cleanings. This is what I love. You're guaranteed to bring home at least a rack a day um, and you want to be able to make sure that you're able to provide that top tier service and be able to take home good profits. And like I said, you want to maximize on your capabilities. You want to maximize on the services that you can provide to this home. But back to my point, do you go ahead and overbid and just expect your service? You know what I'm saying? Do you go ahead and bid it to where you're overbid, over budget for your client? Or do you want to not offer the full service? Um, once again, I think it goes back to your relationship with that client. And I also think that you should always give as much as you possibly can. Because although it's better to have one place and be there all day to make that money you want to make versus being in 10 places, you still want to make sure, that's basically what it is. You still want to make sure that you're able to give the most that you can in a job. I think sometimes it's best to be able to relax your body <laughs> and be able to know that there are so many other companies out there that will take those smaller jobs. And if you're one of those smaller job people, then bid it according to what it is that you do. But me being at the, the level that I'm at in my business, I want to give my full experience. I want to take my team with me. I want to be able to provide a full clean out service for those homes that need it. So when it comes down to how do you get everything done, I think that if you're in a position where you can't do everything, focus on what it is that you can do and you bid your pricing like that. I do a lot of subcontracting. So 
in my event, when I get a job, more than likely I'm bringing, I'm getting a job for more people than just myself. It's not just me. It's not just my cleaning team. I'm going to bring at least two other subs with me. So these jobs are going to rush, are going to typically run a few thousand dollars. So it's really no way to overbid when you know your market. So I guess with that being said, my point is, is that if you're looking for a job, know what exactly it is that you want to do. Don't overstep your boundaries. Don't overstep your capabilities. Stay exactly where it is that you are. Me, I'm no longer doing those types of work, so I don't bid on those types of jobs. But if you are in a position where you feel like all I do is carpet cleaning, go in and bid for carpet cleaning. If all you do is um, uh, maid service, go in and do maid service. If you do property cleanup and all you do is exterior site cleanup, bid that. Stay where you're at. You know what I mean? And you'll win that way. I promise you. And never overbid yourself to where now you lose a job or you feel incompetent or you feel insecure about your pricing. Whatever your price is, that's what your price is. Um, if you choose to be competitive and you want to know what other people's prices are, there's never no problem to ask. And in some cases, people even tell you, hey, your bid is low, you know, or hey, your bid is competitive. And or, hey, you've overbid this job. You're not one of the first. You're not one of the top five. So we're going to move on to another contractor. But no matter what it is, again, know your space, know your lane and um, go ahead and shoot your shot. But make sure you just stay in the area of what it is that you do for you and your team. That way you don't lose a job anyway. And now you start to get a mentality towards to where you can find those clients that you want to actually bid for. And that you know for a fact you're going to win because you know what you're looking for, right? So, with that being said, happy hunting. Don't overbid and don't underbid either.